love me, yeah, they love me. First love yourself. For that. And God we trust, trust me. I don't trust myself. Your jewelry, I get it took. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Florida, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. They will also match your first deposit up to $100, and you get a special pick when you sign up. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your host, Cam, and soon, maybe Mace. <laughs> Which is good, Stat. Are you? Nah, Mace ain't here. This is a miss Mace, but this is the first day he'll get docked. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, he, I'm he took him, over. I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of excited about keeping everything for a day. <laughs> he, he isn't here, so I guess I keep all the money for today <laughs> since he didn't show up. Uh, it's kind of exciting. <laughs> I'm pretty sure after he sees me say that that he won't. He'll be here early right. for now on, but um. Sure. Uh, we wait. We're not all jokes out. We waiting on you, Mace, to see if you get here. Um, you know today's a big day, big morning for us. Uh, as I let you introduce, who's our first guest today? Yes. So our first guest today, we are joined with Mark Jackson. Action Jackson, Mark, what's up, baby? Everything good, man. Everything good. Good to be back. Good, man. I'm happy you back. How's the holidays and the new year treating you so far, man? No complaints. Just getting ready, man. Watching y'all and. Keeping my ear close to the streets. <laughs> <laughs> as you should, as you should, man. We got we got um some things to get to, but um right before we was about to start, Mark said he was a little disappointed with me and Mace about uh not stepping in on some things that Sebastian Telford has said. And I'm, and, and Mark obviously said he has his ear to the streets. Which I, listen, Sebastian woke up a lot of people who were just sitting around quiet. We also have Rafa Austin, Skip the Malu on this same show today. And um, before we get to anything else, Mark, why were you disappointed with me and Mace about Sebastian's interview? Nothing about Sebastian. Why were you mad at us? Go ahead. Well, I, I was upset because y'all not two country dudes hosting the show. <laughs> Y'all two dudes from New York City, two ballers from New York City, well aware of the history That's a fact. Uh, behind the questions that you asked. So right. I thought there should have been a little bit more pushback with his comments. It was very entertaining. And there's no question about his his greatness coming up in New York City and how he impacted the game. I got no problem with that at all. But when you talk about the top players that ever come out of New York City, the top point guards, uh, you, you got to show respect. to the, That's like me coming on talking about Tiny Archibald or, or – and he said Earl the Pearl. Earl the Pearl is not from New York City. Pearl Washington is from New York City. So when you talk about the greats, show respect, and uh, you can big up yourself all you want. But I thought that there's some great players that, that came out of New York City that should have gotten a little bit more love, so there should have been a, some more pushback. And, and you know what, Mark? You're absolutely right, 100% right. Uh, we wanted, and before we get into anything else, because we wanted him to – share his story because he felt he was left out on a lot of different things and not just his story. It's more about what he's been through off the court. And he felt that he was treated unfairly because of his situations off the court. So you're absolutely right, Mark, that it should have been a lot of pushback, not just a little bit more, a lot of pushback, but <laughs> he doesn't have a platform uh, out there where he could tell his story. What we did tell him is we wanted him to come back because we did want to give more pushback. Let me ask you this. There's a couple things about that interview I want to ask you before we get into some NBA basketball. He said that he was better than you. He said he cooked me when he was, when he was in high school. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? Like, let, I, and, and this isn't about me. I'm here to, to speak up right. for hundreds of dudes not named Mark Jackson that that have a case to be made right. and sh deserve to be shown some respect. Um, I played against him as a young kid coming into the gym. He had to wait on. You know how the young kids you got to wait to your turn. You're not playing right away. Right. He he was a top notch player as a 16 year old or whatever, right. and he came into the gym. And he got in, got into the run. There was nothing like he was. You could tell he had a future, and you could tell he was special at 16 years old. But at 16, I wasn't playing, and I, I'm not comparing myself. But you're not cooking no legit NBA dude. Yeah, 
Yeah, and, and here's listen. my question. Here's my question to you. One question. Yes, sir. When you when you was at, when you guys were asking him about top five players or top ten point guard, are we talking about high school players? Or are we talking about body of work players? See that that was the thing that was with Sebastian is that he tried to put it into three different things. It was high school, it was professional, and his biggest thing more than e- any of that was culture. And what he kept saying was that he was a great basketball player and he's not denying in his brain that he's top five or top one or whatever he is basketball-wise, but he said he's undisputably the best <laughs> basketball player that moved the culture forward from New York City. That was his argument more than anything else, that when he played in Lincoln, it was police down the street and up and down the street to make sure nobody gets hurt. That that the gym was filled up around the corner when he played. This was his argument more than even basketball. Now, he had an argument with basketball, but it was more about nobody done for more for the high school culture coming out of New York City. I'm not here to argue for that. You know, okay. what I will say is he was a heck of a basketball player. He had a heck of a career that was obviously cut short due to some, you know, unfortunate situations and, you know, he put himself in, but... I got nothing but respect for him and love for him. I'm just here to defend the guys that were before me, after me, during the time. I mean, we had four point guards in, in my class alone, and Kenny, Kenny Hutchinson, Kenny Smith, and Pearl Washington. Yeah, Kenny that, that Hutch, were man. absolutely incredible. Like, what, what, we, we don't even mention those guys. Yeah. Kenny Hutchinson won a, a city championship, PSL championship, as a freshman. Right. I was on the freshman team. He was on the varsity team winning the championship. Let's show some respect. To the OGs. That's all That's all I'm here to defend. No, and you're absolutely right, 100%. And, and see, the thing about it, Mark, is this. And we, you know, we he was going on and on, and, and Bassey's going on and on. And my argument is this, and I'm not as old as you, but from, I was, I started watching basketball in 1984 when I was seven, eight years old, and maybe not got into high school and college basketball to maybe 88, 89, you know, when, uh, Derek Coleman and, and Sherman Douglas and those boys up at Syracuse was my team and so on and so forth. And it happens, and what happens with younger people, they want to argue with you about what you've seen. And when it comes to that, you've seen what they've seen and more than what they've seen. So when you want to make a comparison, it isn't like, oh, you hating on the young players. No, I've seen what you've done and I've seen stuff with people who've done before you. So how you mad at me for making a comparison when you only seen what you seen and I seen what you seen and more than what you seen? Um, so before we move on, and we're still, I'm going to stay on this topic for a minute, because he told me, he told us to ask you, ask Mark, did I cook him in, in Hunter College? Or so the answer <laughs> is no, he did not cook you. Come on, man. Come he's, on. He's, come a on. Year old, he's a 16-year-old <laughs> kid playing against, I humbly submit the starting point guard for the New York Knicks. You know, wh- what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> he said, Bassy, in other words, cut the shit, nigga. I'm going to translate what Mark said. And, and so you want, yo, cut the shit, nigga. Cut it out, man. Stop coming up here capping too. Now, th- now, I'm, now I feel bad because Mark is saying that we didn't do our job as journalists. And we came up here and let you run your mouth a little bit too much. This is what Mark is trying to say humbly and nicely to me and Mace. And in other words, it's telling you, Cut the shit you didn't. So in other words, you capping. You went to play against Hunter at Hunter High School. You waited on the side for your turn to play. And when you came in, you just got run. Don't act like you cut Mark Jackson's ass. And, you know, I'll wait till, till Skip comes on. And you know what Skip said? He played against, not saying he played against, he said less like he played against uh, Adrian Autry or somebody and did a good move on him. Now he bust his ass. That's the people's problem. You may run past somebody or go across over somebody and now that's elevated to the next level. I'm not saying that's what he said. He outright said, ask you. He said, ask Mark. So I asked him, Bass, and he said, get the fuck out of here in a nice way. <laughs> that's what Mark just said. Second. I love the way you remix stuff. Yeah, I love yeah. the way you remix stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but but let, let me just touch. Yep. Watch the respect when Skip comes on. Now, now if you ask, if you ask Skip, would he bust anybody you know, right. behind it and right. Right. came out of New York City. He to the call of him, he he believes yes. Right. But watch the respect that he gives me and I give him. 
Right. Watch the respect I'm giving Bassey, even though he said that. There's no question about his greatness as a high school player and propelled to the pros and being drafted and, and having a 10-year career. There's no, I'm not here to hate on him. I'm here to defend the guys that, that he disrespected with his tone and his tenor as far as answering the questions about their ability to get. This is not about that person against Bassey. Just show love and keep it moving. He moved the needle, and, and the interview was absolutely incredible. It was very Thank entertaining. You. Thank you. What I will say is this, that uh, usually Rafa and I played, me and Rafa played on the same team, and Steph Marbury, we all played against each other and with each other. And when Skip were said they better to, than you? Who, Skip? Skip and Steph, were they better than you? They ended up being better than me. This dude, is, you a New Yorker. <laughs> yeah, and he ended, they ended up being better than me. at the t- I got the MVP, Mark. Skip was in. The, Skip okay. was in. Skip was in. And Skip, my man, at Laguardia House, and he'll come on. We can verify it. He was talking to the people, the commissions, on that. How you gonna give Cam the MVP? I, <laughs> if you gotta argue with the people about why you didn't, Skip is gonna come on. He'll tell you. Oh, man. wait till I, wait till I talk to Skip. Yeah, listen, y'all might be on at the same. Y'all might be on at the same time. Listen, you know. Let me tell you real quick. So me and Steph. Me, and I, I told I, I don't know if I said this story on this show, and me and you know I like to tease the guys and stuff. So I, I was talking to Steph one time on Twitter. We was going back and forth about basketball on Twitter, and I said, Steph, man, I used to give you the business. I used to bust your ass in high school. And Steph replied to me and he said, exactly, Cam, you're still a high school basketball player. That was it. I, said, I said you won. That's I, I had no reply for that. Because my career That's ended at my and my career ended at JUCO, so I had no reply for that. So, but yeah, I mean, when we played, look, I sent stuff home his freshman year. I'm a year older than stuff. When we played in the PSAL finals to go to the guards, I sent stuff home. That was me, man. Had son against Lincoln. Take pack it on up. Pack it on up. Skip, <laughs> skip, skip it. He went to Cardoza. Pack it on up. Look, they're gonna be on here. The, the, see, the reason they win. Is because they elev- they went to the next level and I didn't. So I can never say that I'm better than those guys. Age 14 through 18, we can argue about it. We could definitely argue about it. And I'm here to argue about it with them, but my career ended at 18 years old. Um, See, that so- makes sense because I will, I will tell you, 16-year-old Mark Jackson against 16-year-old Sebastian Telfair, he's a better basketball player. There's right. no question about it. I, w- I wasn't able to do the things... I played on a freshman team and then started as a sophomore, but I wasn't the man then. So he was better than me in high school, no question about it. But there's some guys like Kenny Anderson, Lance Stevenson. There's some guys that that have a a, a legit argument with what they were able to do for a four-year period. See, that's a different argument, though, Mark. See, because I have this argument all the time with different people. Me, Skip, and, and Steph was 16 at the same time. You and him wasn't 16 at the same time. And what happens year after year is the game elevates and you see people that make you want to do different things. It was nobody in 1988, 89. It was nobody in the year 2001, 2003, 2004 who could dribble like Kyrie Irving. And Kyrie Irving has to see people like Mark Jackson or Allen Iverson or the point guards before him to want to do things that he does now and push the needle forward, you know, I, I sit there and argue with, with, with friends of mine. They'll say, man, them niggas in 1959, I would have ripped Bob Cousy. And I'm like, people had to see a Bob Cousy or Jerry Wester elevate the game. So you can't compare a 16-year-old Mark Jackson to a 16-year-old Bassey because you're, you help elevate the game to where they want to try different things. So I, don't, I wouldn't make that comparison. You wasn't, and y'all came from two different eras. Me, Steph, and Rafa are at 16, 17 at the same time. So I wouldn't even let you do that because the game gets elevated all the time and you were part of pushing the needle forward so that he could do what he does now. Congrats to Bassey and all that he's done and continue to do. Nothing but love, man. We not finished, though. We not finished. (laughs) (laughs) Do you think he's the best player out of Coney Island? For a four-year period or for a body of work? For, he's well, only body going of work on, is no, only one we, answer. We, we're going on a four-year period because obviously he didn't have the NBA career that any of you guys had, whether it's Steph Marbury, uh, Kenny Anderson, you, um, of course, Tiny Archibald, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 
Um, I don't, I think as far as NBA, even Lance Stevenson had a better career than him to me in the NBA. <clears throat> but he's saying out of New York high school basketball, he's the best out of Coney Allen. Coney Allen. Skip to Marlou said that it's an argument that he's not even better than Norm Marbury. And he's not even the second best. <laughs> so I, I was asking you your opinion on this situation about the best okay. out of Coney Island. I'm not going to go as far as no, <laughs> no Marbury. But what I will say is Stefan Marbury is the greatest basketball player to come out of Coney Island. Okay, got you. Now, before we get to some NBA, who are your top five New York City basketball players coming out of high school? Man, and, that's and awfully no, tough. And no, and no particular order either. And well, you, you're gonna say Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Right. Do our sender. Yeah. Right Powell Memorial. Yeah. You know, it's it, he's not just New York's finest. He may be the entire world's finest in the discussion with LeBron or, or people like that coming out of high school. He was absolutely incredible. Um Kenny Anderson is another guy yes. that put in work yes, and sir. that uh put on a clinic from the point guard position at Archbishop Malloy. Sebastian Telfair, I got to give him credit. You, you, I believe he won three championships, uh, starting as a point guard. Lance Stevenson won right. four. I mean, these these guys are in the discussion because they won. Right. Um, I tell you what, when when I watched Chris Mullen play at at, at Severian wow. High School in Brooklyn, New York, right. um, I was a sophomore starting on the team, and it was like we must have been the freshman team playing against them because they they were running circles around us because of his brilliance. And right. his impact on the game. So uh, it, it's so many great players. Lloyd Daniels. Right. I, I understand I understand what Sebastian <laughs> Telfair talked about, trials and tribulations, and he still made it to the league. Lloyd Daniels was half dead, shot up, right. and made it to the league. Wow. You know, because, you, d- d- he was a 6'7 six, seven, legit, six, seven, legit, you know, basically guy that could play the point guard, could shoot, could could pass, could do it all. So we, we, we've had our share of great uh, players. Uh, in, in New York City basketball history. Yeah, and we got to stop leaving out Kenny Smith out this conversation as well, man. Kenny Smith is, he had a great <laughs> career overall too. I don't know about how, how good he was coming out of high school because I didn't get to see Kenny Smith's high school uh, career. But just in general, Kenny Smith is very underrated as a basketball player, period. We don't bring him up enough coming out of high school. And there's other names people forget about because they wasn't as flashy or may not have gone as far. We have to give Ed Coda some props. What up to Ed Coda? Shandu McNeil, Sherwin Anderson. Uh, it's a lot of point guards and players that came out of New York that were really, really good to help people get to the NBA, like uh, Stephon Marbury, because they pushed them uh, as far as they could push them when they was playing in New York City and skipped them out well, me- so and so forth. Let me, let me just touch on Kenny Smith because that's my year. Right. And... Uh, we're the same age and we grew up together and we're friends to this day, brothers to this day. Uh, absolutely incredible basketball player from day one. Spectacular. He had everything you want in a point guard. And, and the difference between Kenny Smith and other New York City point guards, historically, he had a jumper as a kid. So he could jump out the building and he had a legit jump shot and he was fast. That's why he was a Jet. He's no longer the Jet today, but he was the Jet then. But he was a special talent that I had the chance to play against in high school. We had a legendary game where he had 42 and I had 38. Wow. They won. But ultimately, my team won the state championship. Take that, Kenny. Put your 42 <laughs> points. Go home. But uh, I tell you what, he was a spectacular basketball player. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I like to hear, Mark. Talk that. Talk that talk. talk. Yeah, you, I mean, you really still, humble sometimes. Talk that talk, man. No, he's still mad that we won the state championship and lost to them. It's okay. That's the way it works. You got to go home, and we see you next time. You ain't, you ain't got to tell me about it. Mason's still talking about his <laughs> pass that I didn't pass to him 30 years ago. He was open, though. He, he, he was, was open, though. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Mark, he had two points. They was free throws. He didn't have a field goal the whole game. I got 19 points. <laughs> This, all right, but, I mean, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm losing this argument about 70 to 30 that I should have passed this ball like, to other uh, with other people. A lot of people are hitting me like, Cammy was open. Listen, man, when you Kobe Bryant, you don't see nobody, man. <laughs> you know, Kobe might not <laughs> have seen when anybody. You, 
especially when you're 16, given Stephon Marbury and, and Ray for Austin work, you feeling like yeah, I can't be stopped. Right, listen, and that's that game right there. That game right there, that that was the championship. That was the year we sent stuff from home in the in the semifinals. So, um, and and listen, man, they know I tease them all the time. Ray Finskip, I didn't really understand basketball to be honest with you until I stopped playing basketball. I was so emotionally involved, and and you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I was so emotionally involved and didn't take time to ever step back and learn the game from a point guard position. I, I, you know, we were running three guard offense, so I was basically a two guard, and I would run the point guard when I had to. But who's going to draft if you're not Allen Iverson? Who's going to draft a five eleven six foot two guard? It just wasn't going to work out for me. But I didn't realize <laughs> that. I didn't realize that at the time. But big salute to Skip and um, big salute to Stephon Marbury. For those that don't know, um, last night. Stephon Marbury actually issued a response to Se Sebastian Telford via social media on his IG. If y'all guys want to check out what he said about Sebastian, go to Starbury on IG and you'll see what he said. Uh, he basically said that he's not going to clap back at his cousin. It was disrespect uh, with Sebastian's, I guess, older brothers that he wasn't going to tolerate. And he's not going to talk about it because that's family business in a nutshell. So um, check out his IG if you want to see what he had to say about what Sebastian Telford said. Okay. And it's looking like the conversation may continue because it looks like Mark and Skip might be on the segment together next. But right. before we get into that, we're going to get into some of the topics right now. So Miami Heat coach Eric Spolstra agrees to an eight-year, $120 million contract extension. This is the most committed coaching money in history. So what are your thoughts about the extension and do you think it was granted correct? Well, to me, it's well-deserved. He's a brilliant basketball mind. He's had an incredible run, continues to have his, you know, uh, leadership intact as far as they respond and react to his leadership. He's done an outstanding job from day one. So I think it's the, uh, it's a great thing. And I think it, we're moving towards paydays like that for coaches because the way that these players are making, the, the dollars that they're making, it's awfully tough to, to have a $2 million coach trying to tell a $50 million player what to do and, and, and how to react and how to respond and how to execute the game plan. Uh, so I think it's it's well overdue and it's it's a welcome sight that uh, Eric Spolster makes this kind of money. He deserves it. He's had incredible success. And I think others are going to follow that lead. I think... <clears throat> um. <clears throat> If anybody knows who deserves it, it's Mark, and that's why it's a pleasure having him up here. Um, I have nothing bad to say about it. I think that he's done a great job. Uh, very under, I would say a very underrated coach. But what I do have to say is this. I think Ty Lue's a great coach. Uh, of course, Popovich, you, of course, you, um, Coach Jackson. Um I have two things, Eric, Eric Spolstra and Doc Rivers. Can't get it done without the superstars. They get them there, but they don't get the job done. Uh, Doc Rivers is considered one of these great coaches and, you know, and he, you know, and I, and I, I really don't like talking about black coaches or GMs or anybody in that position because it's hard to get jobs in that position. But, we give Doc Rivers a lot of credit. He has one championship. You know, he went to the Clippers. Uh, Lob City was there. Um, you had Chris, uh, primetime Chris Paul, primetime Blake Griffin. Uh, Jordan was there, and they run into, I'm going to say it, Mark Jackson's team. The guy, whether he was there or not, the, Knicks, the team that Mark Jackson put together, and they couldn't get over the hump. Eric Spolstra, to me, is kind of the same thing. Uh, but he gets his team to the championship. Um, but he never won without LeBron James or Chris Bosh or Dwayne Wade. Uh, I think it's more of a testament to Pat Riley and the culture that he brings when he comes to an organization, whether it's the Lakers, whether it's the New York Knicks, whether it's the Miami Heat. Uh, Eric Spolstra is a direct descent of Pat Riley. He was a... He was, he was doing the camera shit before 
He doesn't have any coaching experience. And I'm not calling him a puppet or anything. I think he's learned over the years. But you were under Pat Riley's wing. I believe Stan Van Gundy was there. Got the Miami Heat to the Eastern Conference Finals with Shaquille O'Neal. And got fired uh, the very year he got them to the Eastern Conference Finals because I don't believe, I, and I don't know this for fact, this is all camera on speculation, that Stan Van Gundy had a vision and he may have been giving Pat Riley some pushback. What does Pat Riley do? I see you later. I'm going to come here and coach this team because I see we're this close away from getting the championship. And there was a lot of speculation that Pat Riley was trying to catch Phil Jackson's record on coaching, so on and so forth. But as soon as he got that championship, who steps into the fold? Eric Spolstra, the cameraman. Not the assistant coach, not the person that's on the bench every day. The guy that's doing the film. And like I said, there's no disrespect to Eric Spolstra. I think over the years, you know, the best teacher is experience sometimes. He gained experience being there. But coming into the job, he had no experience. You're under Pat Riley, and you're the cameraman. And you didn't win any championships without LeBron James, Chris Bosh, or Dwayne Wade. You got there with Jimmy Butler a couple times, which is phenomenal, and Bam Adebayo, which is phenomenal. But you didn't get the job done. The biggest thing I take away from this whole situation is that I believe that he may have been getting this money previously, but the Miami Heat and Pat Riley and the organization was smart enough, and he was smart enough as well, when I say Eric Spolstra, to wait till he got divorced to get this money. Now he doesn't have to split any of this money with his wife that he already probably would have had turmoil with or problems with. It's mighty mysterious, 30 games in, you know, we're not, we're not in the middle of the season. We're not at the end of the season. I don't know what his contract extension is. Soon as you get a divorce, the 100 M's come in. Pat Riley and the crew. Smart niggas, man. Salute and congratulations, Eric Spolstra. That's bigger than anything else to me about the, about the whole shit. Could have been getting this money. Like, like Mark just said, you was well deserved of it. But Pat Riley said, you're going through turmoil. You're having problems. It's almost over, right? Hold on five, six months. Keep it. That's what I take away from it, Mark. Okay, let me. I, I, I definitely can't sit there and not say anything. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, I that. <laughs> no, that's that's all Cam right there. You said that's 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 you said that's all you. Yeah, that's Cam. <laughs> yeah. all Cam that's Cam. opinion. No, no, I and I respect the opinion, and that's New York City. Uh, <laughs> Doc Rivers, <laughs> Doc Rivers won a won a championship with the with the uh, Boston Celtics and did an incredible job. Right. He's a Hall of Fame basketball coach when it's all said and done because of his body of work. And uh, there's no hate as far as I'm concerned. We lost the game seven uh, my last year on the road to the Los Angeles Clippers with Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, Jamal Crawford, J.J. Redick, and all those guys. Uh, I got respect for Doc Rivers. Eric Spolstra, Pat Riley won a championship, and give Pat Riley credit. When he picked him, Eric Spolstra was the cameraman. And I'm sure Eric Spolstra would be the first to tell you. You can call me cameraman at that point. But he has... He has changed the image of who he was as a basketball coach. It was a risk for Pat Riley to pick him, but he picked him, and it was a home run hire. Eric Spolster has done everything that you can imagine Pat Riley thought he would do and surpassed that as a head coach and a leader for the Miami Heat. Now, it, it certainly is a luxury having Pat Riley upstairs in the office putting a stamp on everything you're doing, but let's not shortchange Eric Spolster and the job that he's done. He's a Hall of Fame coach also. So those are two guys I got respect for and continue to get it done on a high level. Listen, Mark. This is why I miss my man murder. You stab baby and shit. Like you said the <laughs> same shit I said in a professional, nice, p political way. And that's what you post. This is you and stab are the most professional people I see. You ain't say shit else. But what I say in the most professional way, except giving Doc Rivers his Hall of Fame career. And listen, he might be a Hall of Fame coach, and you're doing the right thing, Mark, because that's why you not care. And this is why I got the reputation I got. I can't go in every room. You can go in every <laughs> room in America. Because you said the same shit I said 
in a nice, polite way, and you and you made everybody look good, and you cleaned it up. But I said the same thing you said. Let me say what Mark just said. Mark said, "Listen, Doc Rivers did win one championship, and he's because he, that's your man. I know it's your man, and and he'll have a Hall of Fame career. I, I didn't say that part, but I'm pretty sure he will. I said he won a championship, and he won a championship since. Who did he win a championship with? A primetime Paul Pierce, a primetime Kevin Garnett." a primetime Ray Allen, a up-and-coming Rondo. P- period. Didn't win one since. Then we go over to Eric Spolstra. You sat there and said, well, Eric Spolstra will say he's the cameraman. What did Cam say previously? He was the cameraman. And he, what did Cam say? He might have earned his way to be a head coach now, but he has Pat Rowley over him. What did, you, what did Mark Jack say? But Eric Spolstra did things the right way, and I'm pretty sure that he earned I said that same shit, Mark. You just cleaned it up. You made it sound good. We on the same page. We we, we on the same page, baby. Thank you. Know what? You my translator, Mark. You said you said for the best way for America to understand it, <laughs> and not urban America for me. So that's why we a great team. I like that. You, me, you and Stan, <laughs> y'all can clean me up. Pause. Y'all two will make me look good because y'all are saying the same things. That I say all the time, man. I think that was great, Mark. I'm trying to see where was me and you. What was different from what you said that I said? So just so I understand. I left out the analytics as far as the divorce is concerned. I mean, <laughs> you, you went all the way. What are you doing? All right, cool. Well, I just thought it was mysterious, man. I, I, I agree with you, Mark. I totally agree with you, 100. percent But I, that that is mighty strange. As soon as the divorce comes in, that um. Hunting, hunting some M's is on the table, man. All his. I know his wife like, man. What you think, Stat? Um, it is coincidental, but I still think, shout out Eric Spolstra. I mean, I think, Here we go, to professionalism. Me, <laughs> Look at the professionalism. To me, he's definitely one of my favorite coaches. And as far as the stats with the Miami Heat, he has 725 wins, 109 playoff wins, fifth all time. He's a three-time champion, two as head coach, seven-time East titles and NBA finals appearances. Can't go past what Cam said because it is very coincidental. And I know that's what people are looking at. But at the end of the day, he signed his contract. He's getting his money. And that's all that matters. He's so, still going to be coaching. So. so he's a three-time NBA champion, two, two as a coach, coach. Yeah. and one is the cameraman. So what I will say, I'll say this. <laughs> that's what you say? There's, there's, there's nobody. <laughs> sorry, Mark. I'm sorry. What you this, say? This. No, no, no. There's nobody. There's no coach that wins without home run talent. Right. So you, we can make that case about everybody that has won a championship. This is true. This is absolutely true. Okay. Yeah, shout out Eric Spolstra. It's pretty, pretty dope. Um, but, but let I us know say, what you guys hold think. On, hold yeah. on, though, real quick. Home run talent is superstar talent, you said, right? Yes. Outside, and, I, and, I, and we can argue about this, and not right now, not today. Do you think it was superstar talent or great talent on the Spurs. Superstar talent. You, you Tim Duncan is, is, is... I'm, I'm saying Tim Duncan, Tim Duncan we, we can't argue the big fundamental. But Tony Parker played his role. Ginobili played his role. They were good, good players. I don't know about... Outside of Tim Duncan, I don't know about superstar talent. All-star talent, absolutely. Superstar talent... Tim like I Duncan. said, I didn't say how many. You win the championship. <laughs> Tim Duncan, superstar all time, great. Tony yeah. Parker and Ginobili's Hall of Famers, but Tim Duncan is a home run player. Yeah, you good boy. That kid from New York, you good man. <laughs> you good baby. You right. You absolutely right. No argument. Moving along, the Clippers signed Kawhi Leonard to a three-year, $152 million contract extension. (laughs) The team is also working on a new Paul George deal. Are they making the right choice? Absolutely. Again, you win with talent. There's no question about the greatness of Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, James Harden, Russell Westbrook. These are Hall of Famers. Why not, while you have the talent, tie them up, the only concern has been their health. And 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 this year they have proven to be healthy and whole and playing great basketball after a rough start when the trade was made for James Harden. So I think it's the right move to tie those guys up financially and secure the future, especially with the Clippers ready to move into a brand new building. How, how, how long is the future, Mark? Because these niggas is young. <laughs> Ain't they not young? What is the future? What, how many more years do you think Paul George and Kawhi Leonard have? 
if we save five at, at, a, at a high level, I mean, say, they, so, they take care of their bodies. I'm sorry? No, God, I'm listening to you. They, they take care of their bodies, and they're proven guys. Down the stretch of ball games, you need guys – that when, when you're talking about playoff basketball and everybody is well aware of what you're running offensively, you need guys that can make a play and get a quality shot. And they got three guys that's as good as we've seen at creating offense for themselves and others. Outside of Kawhi Leonard, I don't know who's proven anything. Kawhi Leonard is definitely uh, proven. He's a, he's, a, he's definitely proven he's a... He was he was the man on the Spurs actually when they won their last couple of championships. He went to Toronto, uh, sent Joel and B home crying with snot in his nose and everything else, and then end up winning the championship. I don't know if they would have won that championship if Clay Thompson and Kevin Durant gets hurt. I don't know about that, but they won the championship, only championship in this in this country of Canada. Outside of Kawhi Leonard, and listen, Paul George gets mad at me because somebody. Uh, said that Paul George was the GOAT. And when they said the GOAT, better, better than Michael Jordan, better than LeBron James, better than Kareem, whoever, he was the GOAT all time. So I told, I said this guy must be on drugs, fentanyl specifically, maybe heroin. I don't know what kind of drug he was on to say that Paul George was the GOAT. So Paul George was like, can, why I can't be the GOAT? Why I can't be the GOAT? And we'll let you be the GOAT because we can't hate on what a kid's dream is saying that you're the GOAT. No, 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 no. I got to stop you there again. Everything don't need to re re be remixed. Okay. Just tell the truth. Shame the devil. Paul George is a great basketball player. He's a Hall of Famer. They can win a championship with him. He can create offense for himself and others. He's spectacular. This just in. He's not the GOAT. And that's I said I respect <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You know, and, and Stephen A. Smith, shout out to my bro Stephen A. Smith when he was on our show. He said the same thing. He had a bunch of reasons why Paul George is the GOAT. My question is, because, and, and let's take, I just want to give you an example of what was going on. You say, yeah, yeah, exact words, Mark, was proven. And I say Kawhi Leonard is proven. Who are the other two players that's proven players that you're talking about? Because there's three other all-stars on the team outside Kawhi Leonard. But I'm trying to figure out who else is proven and what's your definition of proven? Because I don't know who else well, is proven besides Kawhi Leonard. Well, let's take away Russell Westbrook because he's coming off the bench, but he okay. but he certainly is a proven he's a proven guy. But let's talk about the other two guys and, and and Paul George, who is a franchise player with the Indiana Pacers and has been spectacular everywhere he's gone. Was was almost was almost MVP in Oklahoma City. Uh, he is uh, he's he's legit. There's no question about his ability to score, his ability to defend his ability to create offense. James Harden, there's no question about his ability to uh, initiate offense for himself and play make at a high level, assisting, getting getting high percentage shots. He's made Zubak a better basketball player just for the fact of pick and roll basketball where he's diving to the cup and, and, and getting them easy opportunities at the rim. And offensively, uh, he's spectacular. So to me, they got three guys that you can put the ball in their hands when it matters most and, and get a quality look. So I, I I don't think that's up for debate. There's no question about the greatness of those three guys. Once again, Mark Jackson, I will ask you, what is the definition of proven? What if they proven that they know how to play basketball? They wouldn't be in the NBA if they didn't know how to play basketball. They wouldn't be all-stars if they have, don't know how to play basketball. What have they proven? I will say this. The same same argument I was going to say with the coaches, mm -hmm. with, with players. In this league, it is absolutely hard it is hard to win win games, and it is extremely difficult to win a championship. So I don't believe that everybody that wins a championship is a winner, and everybody that doesn't is not. I believe that winners, to me, you know, LeBron getting to the finals with that Cleveland Cavalier team initially, or Allen Iverson getting to the finals with that Philadelphia 76ers team, and 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 you know, putting pressure on Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant, and that Laker team. To me. That I can make the case that that feat alone is 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 as great or better than some teams that won a championship. So so I, I, I'm not I'm not strong on winning the championship. To me, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, they are proven. They are absolutely proven. And listen, I totally agree with you. When it doesn't have to be rings and things you sing about, bring them out. 
I understand that. It doesn't have to be about title town like May says. Let me ask you this then before we move on and go to break. Some guys who haven't won a championship, and I want you to answer this. And you know, I know it's two different errors, but I want to see if if what you have to say about this. This is your expertise. Uh, Paul George, and this is a <clears throat> as a package deal, um, not together, but I'm going to ask for both players, Paul George and James Harden. Are either one of them better than Charles Barkley, or just as good? No. Reggie Miller. I mean, you're close to home, but they're, they're, they're all in the room. They're all home. Yes or no, Mark? Are they better? Is there even one of them better than Reggie Miller? James Harden was an MVP. James Harden, you can make the case, could have been an MVP multiple times. Mm-hmm. And and not only is he a legit scoring title champ, but he's a double-digit assist guy. I think we don't give him enough credit, enough respect, because he's absolutely fallen short at times in the playoffs. But he's a he's an outstanding basketball player. I would say they're all in the room, and Carl, it's, Carl, it's, it's Carl, tough. Carl Malone. Again, they're in the room. Patrick Ewing. In the room. Okay, cool. I just want to see who you use that with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool with those answers. But I just what, want to see everybody you name. Think about everybody that you name is a Hall of Famer, great basketball player. No, and I, I went specifically guys who I know are Hall of Famers that didn't win championships. That's why I asked for, for, about those players because we were talking about, you, you made a great point. I'm not big, I, I'm big on championships, but it doesn't define you who you are as a basketball player because, you know, the, it may not be in your favor to win a championship because you don't have the best team. But I name, I specifically named Hall of Famers who I know are good and won MVP, league MVPs before and when it comes to Carl Malone and when it comes to Charles Barkley. And I want to see where you would put those guys with uh, James Hart and Paul George being that they haven't won a championship so far. So I just want to see the comparison. That's why I was asking. And you hit, I'm, I'm like Tito Jackson. You went with Pat Ewing and Reggie Miller. I was, I was with, I was with I, Michael. I, I, I can't I go did, against I did that on purpose just to see if you would go against <laughs> your, your boys, man. That's, that's messed I up. I can't do that. You, you say, that's messed You were supposed to say no, that they not better than them anyway. What kind of teammate are you, Mark? Come on, man. <laughs> you, look, I can't, I can't kill Bassey for coming on their line and then I start line. I got to tell the truth. <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Consistency. Okay, so we're going to go to break, and when we return, we will be joined with Skip to my Lou, and I promise y'all, y'all don't want to miss this. Pink horsepower. She called this thing and toxic. What's happening, baby? Baby, what's happening? Why are you walking like that? That's how, that's how I walk. And then, like, you come on breathing on me like that. I fucking breathe to live. And, like... You used to be dark skin and now you act like hella light skin. Are you fucking blind? I'm dark skin. What what the fuck? And then like look at your beard. What the fuck is your wrong with my looks beard? Stupid. What the fuck are you talking about? No, I don't even like it. The way you breathe in all of that. Has this ever happened to you? Your girl seems to be mad, angry, upset. She's frustrated. It's only one way to handle that. Pink horsepower. <laughs> No, wait, your breath, remember, wait, your breath is really refreshing. No, 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 no. I'm just trying to give you a massage. Plus, have I told you how good your beard looks lately? It looks so good. No. PHP, it works every time. Wait, where are you going? Welcome back. So let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. The Knicks will play the Mavs. Jalen Brunson is at 38 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Do you got him higher or lower? Points, rebounds, and assists, 38. Gets the Mavs. Mm -hmm. Kyrie Irving's playing. Mm -hmm. Lower. Okay. Julius Randle is at nine rebounds. Do you have him higher or lower? He's such a... I'm going to go lower. I'm going to go lower. And Kyrie Irving is at 30 and a half points. Do you have him higher or lower? Damn, man, that's a good one. 
Listen, real quick before I answer that, make sure you go to Underdog Fantasy, download the app. They'll double your deposit up to $100. So if you put up $50, they'll give you $50. You co- use code CAM. Right now, four people that's used code CAM is going to the Super Bowl. Y'all won over $3 million fucking with me and my picks. This is what I do. And what I will tell you is this. Kyrie Irving is going to have more than 30 points tonight because Jalen Brunson has been busting ass. This is a real test because a lot of people, they've been saying, oh, I may want Jalen Brunson more than Kyrie Irving. You know, he's a true point guard and Kyrie's a headache and all this. We haven't really heard anything off the court about Kyrie <laughs> since he's been in Dallas. It's been a good move for him in Dallas when he was in New York. There's just too much going on. Amazon, whole bunch of shit was going on. I like Kyrie in Dallas because he can focus on basketball. He's down there with my brother, with up Sham God. And I'm going to go with more than 30. Kyrie, do not make me look bad tonight. There you go. You heard it here first. Make sure to download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks too. We are joined back with Mark Jackson and another special guest, Skip to my loop. Yeah! 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 Yeah, I got everybody! We got New York, baby! Yeah! What's up? What's up? Yeah! 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 I got everybody up here, man! Mark and Skip at the same time! First of all, let me say something real quick. I'm so excited, pause, to have both of these legends on the show at the same time. This is big for me, pause. Even though these are both my brothers, To be on the screen with these guys at the same time, um, it's amazing for me as a, you know, uh, as Stephon Marbury told me, I'm a high school basketball player. But these are not only my my friends, I'm also fans of these guys. So this is a big moment for me for having both of you guys on the show. Thank you guys for both joining at the same time. Big Queens in the building. Big Queens basketball in the building. Mark is the BQE Expressway Skip just told me. Thank you guys for joining. What I will say is this. Um, Skip is not smiling. I don't think he thinks nothing's funny. I, he, hold on, my earpiece came out. Skip is up here with the Afghanistan beard and nothing but a straight <laughs> frown on his face, B. He, with his accolades in the background, it looks like Skip got a chip on his shoulder. But I'm going to get my earpiece back in. And even when I introduce him, it's a frown, like it's a boxing match or a game about to be played. We'll get right into it. Uh, Skip, thank you for joining. How have you been, brother? Man, good, man. Always great to catch up with my my childhood friend, my backcourt mate. We played biddies, midgets. Yeah. Uh, we got history, brother. That's yeah. a lot of things. People don't, people don't understand that you, you, when you speak basketball, you do know what you're talking about because you play, you play alongside some of the best. Thank you, man. You know what it is, too, Skip? that my basketball career ended so short. And me and Mace, you know, I went to, and I'm not going to get into me. We're going to cut this short. But what happened is um, I got kicked out of JUCO my first year. And when I got kicked out of Ju- JUCO at 19 years old, I, Mace had a $2 million record deal waiting for him. And we just became rappers. We never tried to go back to school or anything else. Not saying we would have made it to the NBA or anything like that. But when you're 19 years old and $2 million is waiting for you in 1995 and 96, that will be the end of your basketball career as far as, as far as me and Mace is concerned. But we don't get a lot of credit because they know us only purely from rap. So, But thank you for letting people know that. I really do appreciate that. Thank you, brother. Absolutely. Uh, let's get straight to it. When we got Mark on the phone today, pardon me, on the call today on, on the show, he said he was very disappointed in me and Mace for not giving Sebastian enough pushback, knowing that we know the history of New York City basketball and the names that Sebastian had called out. Uh, Mark said we should have said something more. And we could have, and we probably should have, but we wanted to let him get his story off his chest and his feelings. And we know that he hasn't had the best of times lately. So we wanted to give him a platform at least to tell his story. I spoke to you yesterday and you weren't as nice as Mark Jackson was today. You were pretty upset. And I'll leave that for you to talk about because Mark definitely talked about it before you came on. Mark went from Lloyd Daniels to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to uh, 
Welch, Kenny Smith to, listen, Mark named about eight, nine different players that we didn't name. And you're, you're very, you don't talk a lot, Skip. You, you're about action. You really don't talk a lot. So when I see you on social, when I see you on social media, going back and forth with people, I say, yeah, that's what you got to do. You got to, yo, that's what the fuck you got to do. Stop letting, because you, you, you're one of them guys, Skip, like, I ain't going to argue with niggas. Go to the videotape. Yeah. I'm going to tape. You, or, you, or, 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 or I'm going to pull up in the park and, 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 and give it to you. That's yeah, 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 yeah. We ain't going <laughs> to pause that neither. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. See, the thing about this, when Sebastian was talking about culture, and I said to myself, damn, I, 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 I'm not going to stop it because I know people are going to pull up. When we talk about culture, we talk about somebody, and, and let me say this because I want you to, I'm, I'm going to say a few things before I let you talk. Skip, Skip, Ray for Austin, Skip, a.k.a. Skip DeMarlou. I don't know how the fuck you got to the NBA because you, you didn't go to high school that much. I don't know. Right. You didn't go to high school that much. You, you got in some type of way into Fresno State. Not only did you leave Fresno State, you started this whole N1 mixtape shit to where people like Kyrie Irving said he wouldn't be the basketball player he is without the N1 mixtape shit, and then still had a great year, career, pardon me, in the NBA. That's how good you are. Because in that era, you had to follow the right route. You had to go to school. You had to pass your SATs. You had to go to school, to college for a certain amount of years. And then you had to go to the NBA. You skipped all the right ways to go to the NBA and still had a decent and great career in the NBA. That's how talented you are, and that's how much culture you push forward. What do you have to say about I just want to let people know that, and for those that don't know, go to YouTube and type in Ray for Austin, or type in Skip to Malou, or type in Am one and you'll see everything that this man was doing uh, before it was an iPhone, or any phone, period. For, for, period. For, and, and listen, it's no footage on me playing basketball because I wasn't that good. I was good. In my brain, I was good, you know. And the reason why it's footage on Skip is because the cameras followed him. Back then, you had the bulky shits. The camera, you had to carry yeah. like this or like this. That's Nobody was going to buy one of them to invest to follow me around. They followed <laughs> him around with that big, doofy-ass camera. That's how good he was. So I wanted people to know that, Skip. Um, like I said, Mark talked about what Sebastian said. Uh, earlier, what do you have to say about Sebastian saying that he's probably the greatest player, not only only out of Coney Island, but out of New York City, period? Like I, I chimed in today and I said, I, I thought the man was high. That's what I thought, <laughs> to be honest with you. I'm not, and I'm not shit code. I, I don't mean it, and I don't mean it disrespectful with all, with all due respect, because my thing is, how dare somebody like that who I give him the utmost credit and respect. You had a phenomenal high school career. I, I say that with respect. Not putting him over the Lou Alcindors, the Kenny Andersons, the Pearl Washings, and the list goes on. My man sit right there, you know, on the other side is Kim and Mark Jackson. Like, but at the end of the day, how dare you say that you're the greatest in New York City history with all this New York City history before you? None of us New York City New York City basketball players ever put ourselves ahead of the players of yesteryear, the players that came before us and that laid laid the foundation, the groundwork for us. There's no Rafa Olsen without a Mark Jackson, without a Rod Strickland, without a Boo Harvey. The list goes on and on. How dare me as a young say talking about I'm better than those guys? I don't care. I'll give you a prime example. When I first got into an NBA game, was against Mark Jackson. It was against the Pacers. I scored six points. You think I'm going to call a Queens? God bless his soul, made recipes. His brother was my best friend. You think I'm going to call Escalade like, yo, I bust Mark Jackson's ass? <laughs> how, did, why, how, why would I say I scored six points on Mark? Forget the fact that Mark won and Mark backed me down and had 13 points and 13 assists. That goes out the window because I scored a measly six point on, on such an iconic uh, individual. That's the problem I have with Sebastian. It's like, I understand that when you're young, you have this persona and you have this feeling about yourself. And we all in New York and everywhere, 
we were we taught and raised to don't say someone's better than you. But when you get to a certain age in life, reality's reality, and we're grown men. Let's cut it short, man. Sebastian needed to pump his brakes. If his brakes didn't work, go get touched by Midas. No free. <laughs> go, go, you know what I mean? Go to Midas. Get, get your brakes free. And, and, and come back to the come back to the drawing board with us. And, like I said, I would love to pull up on Sebastian, have a dinner. Let's talk, bro. And we could talk our New York City basketball history, yeah. man. Yeah. And I would tell him, it's no shape, in no shape, form, or fashion can Sebastian Telfia mess with me on a basketball court. Nigga. It's not happening. He can't. Mess. He can't mess with Mark Jackson. He can't mess with Stephon Marbury. These are guys that should be in a Hall of Fame. That's Mark like- Jackson has Hall of Fame. Mark Jackson has Hall of Fame numbers. Stephon Marbury has Hall of Fame stats. They should be in the Hall of Fame. And you got in. You 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 had an iconic high school career, and all of a sudden, you my NBA career is better than Sebastian Telfield. Yeah, talk that shit, nigga. I'm just saying, like, it's, it's, it's just my thing, and I don't like when people, like, Sebastian, why, this market talk facts. I could speak facts. Sebastian, you have no facts to back this up. You were dominating high school back. You you beat Midwood, Sheep's Head Bay. whoop de doo <laughs> <laughs> whoop de doo if you really want to get to your high school career, if you really want to talk about your high school career, you be Canarsie. Right. Come on, man. Right. You were feasting on bottom tier PSAL teams. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm just being actual factual. Right. Sebastian, we love you, man. But something's off, something's missing. I don't know. And as your fellow New York City brother, if you ever want to talk and you want us to pull up on you, have dinner and talk to you, man. Get you right. We will, man. But we will tell you in your face, you can't mess with us, man. <laughs> y'all two from, y'all from some different parts of Queens. Because <laughs> that was some hardcore Queens shit going on just now. God damn. Nella? Woo. Woo. Right. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my earpiece fell out on that shit right there, boy. And the man talked, he talked about culture. Yeah. I was a culture phenomenon, and I had no idea that what I was, nor did I care about it at the time, because you know, Ken, I was 15, 16, 17 years old, and they trying to say, a prime example, they try to say I was one of the greatest streetball players. I tell people, no, I wasn't. What about the Fly Williams? What about the Earl Man? What about those guys, the Joe Hammonds? They one time they said I was the greatest player to ever play in uh, Rucker Park. Dr. J played there. <laughs> I have nothing on Dr. J. I ain't got nothing on this man. <laughs> right. And that's what I'm saying about a guy like Sebastian Telfair. Like, come on, man. These dudes, these people that came before you laid the foundation. They even laid the foundation of what it is to be the greatest New York City high school basketball player. When high school basketball played, when Mark and them was playing and all that high school basketball, damn that every team from Catholic school to plus was nice. They was nice. You got one team with Walter Berry. You got Chris Mullen at one high school. You got all these different schools. Pearl Washington at Boys and Girls. Like this, the list, when they was playing was crazy. The list with me, when you and I was playing, when you was at Manhattan Center. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. I, and I hate to bring this up, but Mark, we... We scrimmaged them, man. I, I scored 31 on Mason, Cam, and, and Richie Parker. <laughs> he he and my, didn't tell me my that. Brother Cam, my brother Cam and Mason and them wanted to fight me because I had I, I moonwalked down the court dribbling the ball one time, and Mason Cam was like, yo, you're not going to do that in Manhattan Center. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my guy, you know. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> you do, no you recollection. Say, right, so <laughs> this what we doing? I was going to let you know. This what we doing? I no, bet. No, no, I, I, <laughs> I bought, I bought you the Rucker. I had Coach Dave and them come get you and bring you the Rucker. I bought you the LaGuardia. We, I just told Mark, you cried when I got MVP. You definitely bought me LaGuardia House. Yeah, and LaGuardia, LaGuardia House when I got MVP when LaGuardia. we was on the same team. When I got MVP, you, you went to the, com- you was a commissioner talking about, Cam is really getting the MVP. You don't remember that? I bet you don't. Y'all I had because I think I had like 30 points. Nah, it was, it was, I it must have had 37. Was, was then I had to have 37. 
<laughs> they so, over and see and so Cam and yeah. Cam. You 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 actually told on yourself because you said you brought me to LaGuardia House and you got to me. Go no, figure. No, I'm How saying. How are they gonna give it to no, the guy you brought skip in? The what I'm trying, see, you're not understanding. <laughs> see, Skip, hey, you Mark, might, you know what Mark, I'm gonna say LaGuardia is? House yeah, I'm gonna let Skip talk. Yo, Mark, LaGuardia House is down the block from where Cam and them grew up from. He has his home team. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. This, this, making what tell you. See, this is what I'm gonna tell y'all. I want Skip to go off. I like this Skip. I like this Skip right here. Skip usually be quiet. I, I like this Skip. Now, before we get back to Sebastian, what happened is this. I brought all the niggas because I played with Gauchos Riverside. I tried to get niggas that's not from Harlem to come up town because I knew niggas with money. I knew niggas who would pay these niggas to come play. So I, and, I, reached, and they I, did. I reached out to Booger. I would, get, I would call my nigga Skip. I even call stuff on Marbury sometime to come up town. I'm like, y'all niggas, you know, and I'm not putting niggas out there. I'm just saying we was fucked up. So if we could play basketball and get a couple of dollars, I would reach out to my people. So I knew some people was a couple of dollars and I bought Skip up town. I didn't bring him there to be my teammate. I bought him there because he was good. I was just better that tournament. <laughs> and that's that's just what happened <laughs> that particular tournament that I happened to be better. That tournament, Skip went in the office and was like, Cam is really getting the MVP. That's what y'all are telling me. He wants to fight the commissioner. That's the only story I got up on Skip. He, he, he's right. He came to Man Center. He bust our ass. But listen, nobody ever outright bust my ass. If you had 31, I had at least 20 something. Only person that I will admit that gave me the business in high school outright because it was no scouting report on him and I was just confused is Ed Coda. I, Ed Coda gave me the business. I, I can't give anybody else 100% <laughs> of killing me besides Ed Coda. It was no scouting report on Ed Coda and when he came up to Mass Center, I was trying to rip the kid in because I thought I had good defense and he gave me about 38 points. Skip, he may be right. I told Skip this on the phone and... um earlier when I was speaking, and just like, and no jokes aside, just like um, when I, before he started talking, I've never seen anybody outside of Ali Mo and him who didn't put the work in who was so good at a young age. I know when he got older, he got serious and put the work in. But, Still, but let, yeah. let me cut you off. Let me cut you off. So yes, sir. That's because you guys didn't see. So, okay. Um, because I'm in Queens. Remember? Right. Only time y'all really saw me is when I did come to town. And what happens is sometimes after we played whatever Thomas, that Coach Stern, shout out to Coach Thurman player, yep. whatever Thomas, Coach Stern, either I went back to Queens or I hung out with y'all. Right. I mean, God bless our, our God bless the soul, our brother Huddy Six. Yes. We we would be running, y'all had me running around Harlem. <laughs> yes. I was yes. talking about, we like little, we like little rug rap, but we, you couldn't yeah. tell us nothing though. That's a fact. Right? Uh, yes, sir. But when I worked on my game every day in Queens. Gotcha. Right? Again, Mark, I used to go in the house and tape like 86, 87 Mark Jackson games, Rod Strickland games. I used to watch these guys relentless, man. So and to piggyback on your intro, that's how a guy like me plays 11 years in the NBA because I studied the game tapes. And the thing so is... When, when, I played, when, when I played for a lot of coaches in the NBA, they couldn't understand how the hell I already knew how to run your team. Right. I knew how to run a team because I studied the game tapes. Right. I would put the DePaul game on. I would put the St. John's game on. I would put the North Carolina game on. It didn't matter what I went outside and did. When I came back in the house, I would go to my mom. Did you record that game? Put that put that VCR tape on. I need to I learn. I knew how to control tempo. I knew what it is to understand time scoring situations. And that's what, uh, like, when we were coming up, a lot of people say, well, this kid's better than Rafe. This kid's better than Rafe, whatever. But they didn't understand why I kept excelling and succeeding because I knew times go at a young age. Why? Because I, I watched these guys do it on the highest level. And 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 <clears throat> you're absolutely right. I, I'm sorry that I did say that. The reason I thought you didn't practice or may not put the work in is because you wouldn't come to games. Like, you, we thinking we about to play Cardoza. Skip's, uh, Skip's not here. Oh, Skip, we're getting ready to play against Riverside or whatever team you play for, um, aim yeah. high or whatever. Skip's not here. We're getting literally mentally getting ready to play against Skip, and you never was there. So I'm like, Skip off doing some wild and, shit. And, and, and see, I'm glad you said that. Right. And that's my point to Sebastian Telfair when you right. talk about somebody's better than me. Right. Back in those days, you guys got prepared for me. That's just facts. That's it. 
Mark, would you tell? That says a lot. This is true. <laughs> no question. You guys are getting prepared for a young teenager. Y'all brace, y'all bracing yourselves. It's like you know, on the plane when the, you get the turbo, they start yelling "brace for impact." You right. guys were bracing for impact. <laughs> you guys were bracing for like, yo, wait a minute. When this guy, when this guy comes over the flyball bridge, we gotta be waiting for him. <laughs> yo, when he comes over the Triborough bridge, yo, some of y'all, somebody, somebody guard him from right there. Don't wait for him to get inside. The, the, the building. Somebody go guard Skip Rafe. Remember, I wasn't Skip. To, to y'all, I was Rafe. You wasn't never Skip to us ever, y'all, ever. You done, you're right. You, you, Javal Jones, all of, y'all gave my first nickname. Y'all called me Sleepy because y'all said, right. yo, Skip, every, y'all Rafe, every time you come around, you look like you Sleepy. This is true. This is an actual fact. Y'all, y'all gave my first nickname. You're, you're right. To be honest, you was never Skip to the N1 tapes and you, you still Rafe yeah. from Queens that, that's and, super and, duper and, nice. Exactly. This is fact. Exactly. This is facts, exactly. man. If, Absolutely. If, Can you in, Mark, in Mark's house, I'm not skipped to my loop. Right. Mark, God Mark, it's like, so I his think... mother, if his mother, if his mother so many houses, his mother gonna say, hey, Ray, Rafer, you hungry. Right. No question. Yeah. Right. To, 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 I, to I, people I, that know me, go ahead, Mark. No, no, go ahead. You, I, Queen, you're making Queens proud. No, I was, I was just, I was just saying, <laughs> to, people that, to people that really know me, right. I'm not, they never saw me as skip to my loop or none of that. Right. They saw me as Rafe all that, yo, he could play serious basketball. And that's why I look at a lot of people, even in New York City, is like, just because some of us didn't have the iconic high school basketball career doesn't mean... i give you an example. Is Jamal, is Jamal Tinsley terrible, a ba- terrible basketball player? Because he ain't playing high school ball. Right. You know why he's good? Ask Jamal. As I tell y'all, I study Mark, Rod, all these guys. Jamal tends to tell you he's younger than me. He used to, he was on my team in certain tournaments in Brooklyn. He would tell you, yo, I watch Ray. Right. The, the thing I love about it, the thing I love about it, and I said before even Skip came on the show, I said basically Skip is going to show tremendous respect and appreciation for everybody across the board. He's going to show said, great humility. He definitely, humility. Did. He definitely and, did. And that's exactly, without even talking to him, a year, a, couple, a year ago or whatever, without even talking to him, I knew how he was going to come on. So hopefully Sebastian gets the memo and does not take this as hate, but instead embraces, this is how you treat people and this is how you show great respect rather than getting clicks. This is the way to get clicks. And I will say this, when you talk about changing a culture or being a culture impactful person, there's nobody, this is a, this is a, a playground legend that made it to the NBA finals that was, that was running a team this close from winning a championship. That's that's Ray for Austin. Skip to my loop. Change the culture to N1, an entire culture changer where everybody was wanting to be a streetball legend. And he said it. He can't, he was at my house with my with my younger brother. And he was just Ray for. But the impact that he had cannot be denied and cannot be disrespected. Not at all. And 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 here's the here's the crazy about the impact that those guys had on me. Rod Strickland tells the story all the time. Yo, I, I went to Rucker Park to see Skip to my loop. When I saw Rod sitting at Rucker Park on the thing, I was like overwhelmed, overjoyed. Like, man, that's Rod Strickland. Right. I don't care what I'm doing out here. I'm never going to open my mouth and say I'm better than Rod Strickland. I'll bust Rod Strickland's ass. You out of your goddamn mind. I don't care how much I think about it. I, Fast forward I will to me say being in the though. finals. I will say this, though, Skip. I give you so much credit, and you deserve a change in the culture. But the strike against you is if Jay-Z won an MVP in a game that I was in, something wrong. Cam won an MVP, man. Thank you, man. I, I, listen, Mark, I was like, I have, I have a Mark, few things to say. I'm, I'm waiting for y'all to finish. Mark, I have a few things Mark, to say. No, no, no. No, no. no. Hold on, Skip. Hold on. Mark, go back to the NBA in. Finals. The Please go back to the NBA the Finals. Go back, in, go back to the NBA the Finals because I, I have a few lose, things lose to situation. say. I, no, I was lose, lose situation. Yo, go back lose, to the NBA lose, finals because we. I got a couple things to say because y'all guys. Are, I got lose I, it. Mom, I got here. another story. I got another story about go. Cam and Mace. Here we, we go. Played, we played summertime ball. He gonna act like he don't remember this. He <laughs> act like he don't remember my thirty-one points. <laughs> don't act like I'm at thirty-one points, man. Yeah. I got. I'm gonna tell you this other story. Mm-mm-mm. Here we go. It, it was myself. It was myself. Paul Ruddick from Queens. James Phillips, which is Stymie from Queens, we, we came to this tournament called UDC with five players. We get to the park, we playing against Maze Cam and all these guys. 
We beat these. We beat the brakes off these guys with five plays. These guys are talking trash, but wanting to fight. <laughs> we no beat idea. these guys with five plays. He's act again. He don't remember this. I don't remember. I, well, really I don't know. understand what's my what's wrong with my brother's memory, man. I remember <laughs> things with him and I since like, I remember things with him and I since 1988, but he don't this, remember this, stuff. This, I, this I don't mark, understand. Listen, skip to the point, Mark. To the point, Mark. We oh, we got to we damn near got to a brawl in the park, and it was like they were like 15 deep. It's just five of us and Coach Billy Medley. You know Billy Medley, Mark. It's five of us and Billy Medley. We had it was after we done slaughtered him on the court. I threw a punch at one of them guys on the team, and we all took off running and caught the train. It just so happened the train was coming. It just so happened the train was coming. We we made it to the train and made it back to field for 15 dudes to get us. Yeah, right here, man. Now, all you got to do, Can't. Mark, is call Paul Ruddick. Hit Paul Ruddick. You know Paul Ruddick. And hit Stymie, and they will tell you this, this story is actual and factual, man. Cam, you don't remember and this? I couldn't believe my brother Mace and my brother Mace right. and my brother Cam won the fight. Me, I will say I'm this. Na- I'm their teammate. I, I'll say this. <laughs> Me and Mace throw at each other when we when we played against each other. We don't like to lose. I don't remember what he's talking about, chasing niggas to the train station. That was some Brooklyn shit. All them niggas didn't chase niggas to the train station. That was that's <laughs> when you had to go to Brooklyn. That ain't really even our style. We used to have to run out of Brooklyn from Red Hook, Brooklyn, wherever we go play at the gyms. Yeah, level. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. you remember that? Okay, cool. Anyway. One thing about us, Cam, I, one this, thing I say is we were fierce competitors as young kids. This is true. 10, 11, 12 years this old. We were, when we used to practice in that dirty basement gym in Salem Church, you, yes. we we didn't want one person to score. As soon as somebody scored, somebody was saying, man, you score me one more time, I'll punch you in the face. That's yeah. just who we were. Yeah, this is, this is very true. This is, <laughs> nobody wanted to lose. Like, I remember... No. And, and not just no. skip, I'm saying we I wouldn't talk, and like he said, God bless the dead, my brother Huddy six. And and I lived in Hud's house four, four or five nights a week. I would rather go sleep in the street than go to his house if I lost to him. That's how bad I would not go home because we oh, yeah. didn't. Huddy ain't gonna hear you I'm talking. Yeah. So at the end of the day, listen, I don't remember UDC. I'm not saying it didn't happen. Maybe I just remember the good times. Maybe, maybe I only... Okay, I was about to say, I was about to ask you, do, you, do, you remember, do you remember you playing at UDC? Vaguely. Vaguely. UDC my mom used to call it... My mom used to call it convenient amnesia. Yeah, no, UDC was in the Bronx. UDC wasn't in Harlem, so I do remember UDC. Yeah. It was in the Bronx, but... Okay. I, I'm in not... The Bronx. Skip, right. Skip, listen, I'm not taking nothing away from you whatsoever. I'm just telling you when we played on the same team... I got, I got the story. End. I'm going to see... Here we go. Here we go. I got go a great story... <laughs> I want to see if Mark remembers this. Okay. Because this this involves Sebastian Telfin. Okay. God bless his soul. Mark uh, is in contact with my, my I call him my uncle, Mike Ellis. They were playing pickup in the gym. I come in the gym. It was, I don't know the white guy's name that was running the gym. I get there kind of um, late. These guys are in the middle. They run. I get there, the white guys are already laying into me. I don't care who you are, you coming in late. I'm like, Mark is giving me this, this signal, like, Ray, just chill, chill. All right. I jump, I put my shoes, I jump on the court. I'm on the court. I'm playing Sebastian Telfair is on the other team. Jamel Thomas is on the sideline pumping Sebastian up. Man, I don't care what school skip, yo, you go right at him. Go right. I look at Jamel, I'm like, damn, 530. We, we, I thought we was cool, brother. All right. <laughs> Sebastian tries to hit me with Stefan's move. I pick his pocket. I do the skip move down the court, throw it to my team, he lays it in. Sebastian had a look on his face like he wanted to cry. I don't know if Mark remembers that, but I, I saw oh, Skip, this is he said he was at, he said he came to the gym as, as a high school kid and cooked us. <laughs> okay, I didn't okay, I didn't remember. What, I didn't, Arnie Jacobs ran the gym. I didn't know that's he was on that gym. Okay. Yes. So what, that's what I'm trying to tell you. What, what Mark is saying that Sebastian was on the show and told me to ask Mark how so, okay. he came to the gym and cooked Mark Jackson. And Mark is like, get the fuck out of here, basically. He didn't say it like that. I didn't say that. He didn't, no, he definitely <laughs> didn't say it like that. He definitely didn't say it. He, with Mark, I'll, so say, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you verbatim what Mark said. He said, come on, man. Come on, man. That I said, I translate that to get the fuck out of here and stop capping. That's to my <laughs> translation. That's how I took it. And and see, I didn't I, I didn't I didn't know that part. So basically I'm validating Mark's Mark. Right. Come on, man. I'm, I'm validating that. Like I got to the gym late because like I said, Mark was in contact with my boy Mike Els and said, yo, t- basically tell Skip that the runs, this is where the runs is at. Because when I come home in the summertime after the season, I don't know where the new all I know is the playing tournaments. Like 
One summer, Mark was on my team in two tournaments. He was on my team in Rucker, and we had games at Hunter Collins. We end up and, and we end up slaughtering these dudes at Hunter Collins, winning the six foot trophies. <laughs> I think Mark did the same thing I did with the trophy. I gave the six foot trophy some kid outside. I'm like, I'm not in the trophies anymore. <laughs> I just gave the little kid outside. But the moral of the story was Mark Jackson, Ray, Ray for Skitzman, who was on the same backcourt. And all these guys we was playing against, and it, it reality set into them. What the hell are we gonna do to these two guys, man? What are we gonna do to what are we gonna do with them, man? Another problem. And that's is- my thing with and, that, and that's my thing with Sebastian. Mm-hmm. Even in the pickup, Sebastian, what did you you did nothing to Mark? And I got there late, so I don't even kind of. But by the time I got there, Mark was on cruise control. I come in late to my thing. The, 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 I don't know the guy's name. He's laying into me. Oh, you kind of my runs late and all that. Yo, sir. Yo, that, sir. All right. All right. Real, real quick, that was another problem that Sebastian had with what I said is that I was I was on Matt Barnes. Shout out to Matt Barnes and um Sack Five Show. And they asked us, asked me who has the best players in New York City, borough wise. And what I told them was that uh Harlem would never have the best players because as soon as the game's over, it's too much shit to do. We're not focused. Nobody's helping us out. We're rolling dice. We're going to mess with... It's a hundred things to do, so we're not even in the top two or three. I said the Queens had the best basketball players. That's Cameron's opinion. The Queens has the best... Had or has the best basketball players in New York City. It was another hellfire. Cam, you out your damn mind. Brooklyn got the best basketball players. Yeah, they Nobody's said Brooklyn. Brooklyn. They say Brooklyn. Yeah, so my answer was Queens. What do you guys think about that borough-wise? Can't tell me. I'm always say Queens. <laughs> I'm right. always say Queens. And, but I'm being by. But it's it's tough to say, man. Right. I, 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 and, and Mark has a better handle on that type of stuff because they when I was gathering growing up, they was trying to say the Brooklyn side at that time in from eighty or seventies, late seventies to 80, 4, 85, The Brooklyn side had the best players. What they is what I gathered as I was coming up through the ranks. Uh, in Queens, and, and you know, but you couldn't tell me nothing about Queens. That's that's just how it was. Yeah, for me, I, I'm I'm a I'm a guy that you know represent both Brooklyn and Queens, so I would be on both lists. Uh, so I'm, I'm proud of both. <laughs> I, I don't think you can pick between the two. So. Gotcha. A lot of great, a lot of great history, and a lot of great players. Well, listen, man, I'm gonna we're gonna um, I want to talk about one thing NBA before we get out of here. A couple things, because we got about five minutes. Um, first of all, thank you guys so much for your insight and what you guys done to the, for the game. Not only professional high school uh, coaching with you, Mark, uh, 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 analysts, and Rafe for what you're doing. I want to, Before we leave, too, Rafe, I want people to know what you got going on. It's, it's been a pleasure to sit down with somebody I looked up to and admired my whole career. I had no idea that you and Rafe had the relationship that you had. I didn't even know you guys knew each other. But Rafe, like he said, we've known each other since literally 11, 12 years old, maybe 10 years old. And Rafe, we spent the night at each other's house. Or rather, he came. I never really went to Queens. He would come that's up been That's been at your house. Yeah, that's yeah, house. yeah. He come to HUD house or JaVale's house or Coach Thurm's yeah. house. And it's just been a pleasure to sit down and talk with my childhood friend, uh, because we haven't really got to hang out too much as adults, even though we have some time. But Absolutely. this has been Absolutely. this has been a great, great episode for me, man. And and I would love to do this again, man. I know Mark's coming back on. Hopefully one day, Rafe soon, we could get you back on again. And um leaving out um Sebastian, man, I I they said what they said, nigga. <laughs> That's that. They said <laughs> they said what they said, nigga. L- lastly, before I have um, one NBA question for both of you guys. Um, earlier, Skip said that when the plane land, we braced for impact. Nah, nigga. Nah, 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 nah. nah. We know I wasn't going to let that slide, nigga. Calm you said f- it yourself, bro. No, you just said that. Calm the fuck down. What I told damn, you was. Damn, no, damn, no, no. I let you damn, talk this whole time. I shut damn, the fuck up the whole no, time, Skip. Damn, Yo, Skip. Skip. I gotta say Oh, man. go ahead, man. No, no, I let no, you talk no, for no, 77 no, minutes. No, I didn't say no, shit. No, I sat here. But this sh- is why you brought me on the show. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's a fact. I want you to talk your shit. Hey, listen. Skip, the door's open for you. This, this, hold on real quick. I want to say, but the door's open for you anytime you want to come up here. Go ahead. 
Cam, this is what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> and you said it best. I was never a person to toot my own horn. That was that's not me. That's not how I, I was about action. But I'm I'm older now. Can since I say, the day can they I say, put me in C, can, can since I say, the day well, they I, put I was, me in CYO, all the way to, to I went I won't say the NBA, but all the way till we got a little older. I right, never can I say what I gotta say. When they, they, you, I, you, you was on high alert when Ray, when they said, yo, yo who, who played with St. Catherine? Who's playing with St. Catherine? Oh, they got Rayford. <laughs> yo, listen, I, what I was going to say is this. When he was talking about Rayford Impact, this is what I say. Rayford, Stephon Marbury, and Felipe Lopez were the names you wanted to kill. Because those were the names that, well, it was, uh, what was his name? God bless the dead. Krzyzewski. What's the um, white guys who used to be? No, Kuchowski. Kuchowski. Tom Kuchowski. Tom Kuchowski. Them yep. were the premier players in New York City. So when you had a game against Rafa, when you had a game against Stephon Marbury, and when you had a game against Felipe Lopez, you like, yeah, Tom Krzyzewski is going to be there. Time to bust ass. Nobody was braces for shit, nigga. We was on we was on that type of time. We was ready, nigga. We knew we was gonna land the plane. What? We was gonna land the plane and we beat. We, we was Mom. gonna land the plane. Mom. Fuck is you talking about? I'm it was land, a house now takeover. Mom. We was gonna land the plane, you, nigga. Other than nobody I, bracing for Mom. shit. We knew Yo, Tom Sosowski was going to be there. We knew that Tom Sosowski was going to be there, and it was our turn to get our recognition because y'all three was the top, the prime time players, and we needed to shine for two minutes. That's what <laughs> that, that's what was going on, nigga. Yo, you like I tell Sebastian, talk about the guys that <laughs> do not. I ain't getting like, high, no, nigga. No, you, no, I'm just saying. No, <laughs> when you say when you talk when you talk about the wreck you was the, 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 the what you was doing. Talk about when you did it against guys like Brandeis, Park West. Talk about those schools. But when, you, when it comes to me, don't put me in those You didn't categories. play, Skip. You didn't come to school. I couldn't play against you. You played one time in school. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. don't, you can't say you caught record against me, even when we played in, in those park tournaments all that. I know. Listen. Skip, Skip. They came to Queens to get me. They came to Queens to get me for Boys of Yesteryear. Okay. I destroyed <laughs> you people. Harlem. And I'm talking about Harlem, not you. Harlem. Okay. They came and got me for... Each one teach one. I destroyed them, them Harlem people. They came and got me. They even, he, 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 he knows, see? He, Yo, I'm Skip. I'm going to bring you back full I, circle. Listen, I'm Skip, I never denied, right I never denied your greatness. Well, First of all, the revolution. They even came and got me, Mark, in 1987 when you, when, when you was uh, God, destroying yeah. the Big East. You know, when you were averaging like 17 points per game and 10 assists a game in the Big East in 1987. They came and got me for small fry. Small fry, yes, yes. <laughs> they yeah. needed my help. Yeah, they they yeah. they came to Jama Southside Jamaica Queens, Mark. They can said, I get a tournament or two? Skip, need some help. hey yo, Skip, can I get one or two tournaments? <laughs> God damn, man, give me give me a two <laughs> tournaments at least, Skip. For me, let me get two tournaments, man. God no, no. damn, man. <laughs> I done you forgot about boys of yesteryear, man. Go ahead, you go ahead, fuck it, you won, man. Go ahead, you won, yo, man. Yo, you Cam, won. Yes. You got a lot of tones with me, man. You yeah. got you got you got Winter City Wild with me. When they play true. that song, somebody gotta win, somebody. Somebody gotta, gotta win, somebody we, gotta lose. That's a fact. And and, and 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 we lost the championship, and we wanted to break the record, the record, pay, the record player. We wanted yep. to break. The record player. <laughs> okay. This is true. <laughs> this is true. We definitely wanted to do. I hated that you song got, when you lost. When okay, you lost that you song, got, you got right. Some of, you got Summer City Wild with me. You yes. Got, you got Little Lads with me in Trenton, New Jersey. Yes, this is true. You, we we got, on, we, we got we got a lot of we got a lot of stuff together, brother. Yo, Come you on, know man. what? I just you know what you at you, these times, Mark. At these times, I'm talking about you couldn't tell my brother Cam that he wasn't gonna be a basketball player. Yeah, so I'm, when he became a rapper, when I was in college, he was a rapper. I'm I was I was caught off. I'm like, oh hell no, he. Yo, this dude was, he was wanting <laughs> to be is, a basketball star. This is true. This is true. Where did these lyrics come from? Like, yo, these, right. yo look at my bro with these lyrics. This is true. This is true. Hey, man, listen. I Maybe I just remember LaGuardia House because I got MVP. I done forgot about Little Laz and City Wise and all the shit you got the MVPs. And I'm sorry, man. I, I, I My bad. You know what else we never, who I never talk about? And 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 we got to get ready to go. Big shout out to Booger Smith because Rayford brought him up to me the Big other day. Shout out to Oliver, man. Yeah, and, and shout to Booger Smith. Before you say something, I got another guy that yes, reached sir. out to me, man. Yep. And this is how I remember Mace because 
this guy, this name I'm gonna tell you, Cam, mm -hmm. is, is special to you, especially me, especially a lot of us that played at Young Life. Right. Because him and this, him and this Mace and this guy, they sound alike. That's how I always remember Mace. Marquis. He reached out, Marquis Pilgrim. Marquis Pilgrim, absolutely. Marquis Pilgrim. He he reached out to me the other day. He said, "Yo, Rafe, do you remember me?" I said. I will never forget you. None of us ever forgot you. Right. And I want to just say that before you was giving the shout. I love Booger's my guy. I reached out to him all the time to see how he's doing. He was a Booger was exceptional with that basketball. But nobody know this guy. And, and Mark, I gotta tell you, and this is how we I pay homage to guys. None of us was touching this young kid when we were eight, nine, ten years old. Nice this kid, Marquis Pilgrim. This kid was different, uh, Mark Jackson. This kid was different. Well, I can't. They gave, they came and told me to come uptown to play with uh, Young Life, and I think I'm doing my thing. And this kid is on the court. I'm like, what is that he just did with that basketball? What did nah, he just do? Nah, Marquis was this different. This kid was so special, man. Yeah. That this kid went to he. This kid went to five star basketball camp yes, and told or, and told them people, I want to. I'm. I want to play one on one with uh, Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas. Thomas. Yep. And wow. shook Isaiah Thomas, man. Yeah, at, at 10 and years said, old. Now, mind you, and mind you, Mark Jackson, all these guys are my idols, but I wear number 11 because I thought I wanted to, I would thought I was Isaiah Thomas. That young man was Isaiah Thomas at a young age. And I said, yo, this man, tech, he reached out to me the other day and I said, I didn't have tears in my eye. Like, I would never forget you, brother. And this kid, and this kid that he's talking about, he's from Harlem. And his career, this is how impactful he was, Mark. His career was over at 13, 14 years wow. old. Like he from eight years old to probably thirteen years old, this kid was ridiculous. And and for us to remember it, him, it might, in our 40, him it might have been over at twelve. Yeah, it might have been over at twelve. So if you almost <laughs> and we in our late forties to still remember this kid, that's how good he was, man. Yo, yo, really, thank you guys and Skip. You know, I'm just fucking with you. I know I never could fuck with you on the court. I'm going to hold my one MVP, whether it was favoritism or not. <laughs> but I never could mess with you guys on the court. Y'all guys are living legends. Oh and before we go, um. I can't thank you guys enough, man. I was going to give a shout-out to Charles Jones as well, too. I, I haven't spoke to him in a while. Charles Jones. Big shout-out to Charles shout Jones. Shout um, what do you guys, because we talked about no NBA, one last thing, and I know, um, Mark, and I want to ask you this, too, and I'll ask you, too, Rafe. What do you think about Golden State right now and where they're at and what needs to happen when Draymond Green comes back for them to even get in the playoff picture? Asking me is tough, uh, and to talk about them and Mark sitting there, that, that, that's tough. But anyway, I can't say they're going to win a title. I think their run, their reign and their run is over. They might prove me wrong, but judging from, you know, Father Time is 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 5,000 B.C. and O. Father Time, you're not beating them. And I just think the run is over. To me, Golden State, was there? They were aiding and abetting uh, Green's behavior by them never wanting to suspend him for all the stuff he did in the past. He, in his mind, he probably felt, "Well, I can keep getting away with this, right?" So you right. and and he was to me as good as he is. I love him. He's part of the demise. He's part of the demise. You 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 you're, you're getting these technical fouls. You're getting ejections. We're sitting here trying to battle win. You're a big part of what we do. He's a huge part of what they do. They go as he go because as, as, as Stephen and scoring, he does all the intangibles. He rebounds. He's playing D. He can push the ball off the from get the, get the ball off the rim. To me, in my personal opinion, this is my personal opinion. At some point, you you got to think about blowing it up and, and getting some fresh bodies, some do uh, some some other players, some veterans, or some other young players in there, and just get, clean clean it up a little bit. It, I, I don't think you get rid of Steph. I think you let him retire as a as a Golden State Warrior. Um, I don't know about Clay. I think you've let him retire as a Golden State Warrior too. But but I can see them maybe wanting to move off because they didn't want to. I don't think they didn't give him the contract yet that he was seeking. He didn't sign a deal with an offer or whatever. But my thing is, uh, well, hold on, hold on, Skip, real, hold on, Skip. And like I said, I want to get too deep. He just just signed last year, four years, a hundred million dollars, and it seemed like they sided with him. Oh, over I didn't know Jordan, he took the extension with, with Jordan Poole. Um, they re-signed they re Wiggins. They re-signed Poole. They got into that altercation. It seemed like they would never get over that altercation because it became public and it's people kept talking over, about it. Huh? Pardon me? 
That's tough to get over. No, I'm not saying. Listen, what I'm saying that's is this. That's tough to get over, man. I'm and, not and I'm say, talking from hold a on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Skip. I'm not saying it is. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying it is tough to get over. But they gave away their future that they just gave 130 million dollars to in exchange for Chris Paul. However, the trade went for more age on the team. So when you're saying blow the team up, I understand what you're saying, but they just re-signed Wiggins and just re-signed Poole, and that was kind of their youth moving forward. And he just signed yeah. an extension four years for $100 million. $100 million. So I'm, I'm, not, not, I'm not sure. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm, I'm just giving you the, what's going on yeah. uh, as far as contract sure. is, concern, sure. is concerned. Right now, right now, there are talks that judging, deciding whether to keep... Uh, Wiggins or or let Kaminga develop to be the small forward. That right. that's a big talk right now. Right. That's a big talk behind the scenes going on with those guys right now. It's like, do we decide if Kaminga if Kaminga's our guy is at the small forward or is Wiggins gonna be our guy? Um, I love Wig. It, it, look, are they gonna break real quick? Are they gonna make the playoffs this year? It's not. I don't think it's that hard for them to make the play in. I don't, okay. I don't see that that being hard. It's, I mean, uh, unless they have more injury, if they get some more injuries, they they just tough. But right now, they they they're not that far back from the playing the playing slots. It's, well, it's not let, that hard to make playing. Let's see what Mark Mark. What do you have to say about it? Yeah, I know you wasn't going to end, end the show without getting uh, to me. No, no. <laughs> we gotta get the OG man. Come on, man. No, I, I I'll say this: they 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 are not that far from a playing team, uh, and you have Steph Curry and you have championship spirit and mentality, they have a chance. What they did with the pool trade for Chris Paul, you talked about they got older. They also got smaller. So they have a problem defending and protecting the rim and uh, don't have the versatility to switch and all of that. And then to touch on the Draymond Green situation, what I don't like is everybody pointing the finger at Draymond Green, deservedly so. But there's some accountability across the board with the league, with the referees, with ownership, with coaching, with teammates that all have co-signed. One thing that the, the legend, my, my partner, Jeff Van Gundy, always talked about, do not accept in winning what you would not accept in losing. They've tolerated it for years, and it has come back to bite them, unfortunately. Absolutely. Hopefully and prayerfully, Draymond Green comes back, and he's healthy and whole and conducting himself in the right manner. He's he's owned or held himself accountable, and now we, we, we expect to see him back on the court hopefully soon. Thanks, Mark, and, and thank you, Skip. Skip, Mark, ho hopefully we're going to check with you. Hopefully you'll be back next week. Mark has a few more episodes with us on his Is What It Is. Also, his new show will be coming out in the next few weeks. Look out for Mark Jackson's. Uh, he has his own show coming up. Skip, let the people know where they can reach out to you, find you, and what you got going on. So if anybody's looking for you, if you want to be found, uh, they know what you got going always, on man. real quick. I always want to be found. Man. Yep. Always, man. But nah, this... You can catch me on Instagram. I'm usually trying, you know, uh, I'm usually in, in on the Instagram, Rafer724 Austin. Sometimes I'm on, on Facebook. Uh, I do a lot of coaching in Houston, coaching the youth kids, AAU ball, 15U. This time I'm going to coach my son's 15U. I hope I don't have to coach my son because he's a starting point guard, freshman on varsity, so I don't think he should be playing in his age group. Uh, Mark, you could you could you could text me and tell me what I need to do with my son. Is you you know better? Than I, <laughs> like I said, when me when Mark and I was younger, if we was playing varsity, there's no way we were playing with our age group. Is, is that to me? That's just a step down. What's the but that is my son. What's the name of the team that you're coaching and where y'all playing? At? This year, so this year I, I was merging with uh, the team's called Coos Elite uh, out of Houston. I'm gonna okay. put them a merge them on there and just you know. Uh, They'll be on, they'll actually be on the Puma circuit. So I guess this year they got four circuits, EYBL, Adidas 3 SSB, uh, Under Arm in the Puma circuit. He'll be, I'll let him play in the Puma circuit if he's going to play with me. But if he's not going to play with me, he'll be on somebody's circuit somewhere. So I hope he's on someone else's circuit, not playing with me with the 15s. Cool. Yo, guys, I can't thank you guys enough. I know we, we stayed on longer than we usually do, but this was very necessary. Um, I can't thank you enough, Mark, every time we get together has been sensational I look forward to uh, seeing you again next week Skip the door is always open to you my brother man it's been a great trip down memory lane I love when you come talk your shit give your give your opinion on how niggas was talking crazy the last few days cause everybody up here <laughs> listening purely enjoyed it and I'm pretty sure that everybody that watched it today is gonna enjoy it 
Thank you guys, Queens, New York City, NBA basketball royalty and legends. Thank you for being on the show. And we really appreciate you guys both. Mark Jackson, great for Skip to my Lou Austin. Salute. Yes. Salute, man. Thank you, y'all. Yes, Skip and Mark, Thanks. it was a Love pleasure to have the both of you guys on the show. But that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, it is what it is. Uh, Suicide. 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 Suicide.